Hello, forensic science students. I am Mr. Williams, and we're going to continue discussing spectrophotometry and how the spectrometer is used using a concept. It's actually a law called Beer's Law. So let's get started. So Beer's Law essentially states that there is a linear relationship between the absorbance and the concentration of the sample. Okay, remember we talked about in previous lectures that absorbance is how much light something absorbs. So if you um, had two, two glasses of coffee, we're putting them in a glass, not a mug, and say you have a really, really dark coffee, right? This coffee has a lot of coffee compared to how much water there is. And then you have, and then you have a coffee that um, is diluted. And so this diluted coffee is going to have not much coffee but a lot more water well how are they going to look well the diluted coffee is going to be lighter in color the dark coffee is going to be darker in color so if you took a flashlight and you put it up next to the dark coffee um, that dark coffee would absorb most of the light and not much light at all would be transmitted through out to the other side but if you took the diluted coffee and put a flashlight up next to it the diluted coffee would not absorb um as much light and more light would go all the way through it. So that's the idea of absorbance. So Beer's Law is represented by the by this following equation. A is equal to ELC. And we'll talk about that in a second, what each of those values mean. So Beer's Law states that there's a linear relationship between the absorbance and the concentration of the sample. So what does that mean? So we have these solutions. You could think of them as food coloring, Kool-Aid, a chemical, whatever. And so the first one that we have here, we have um, no substance added to our solution, to our solvent. Let's say our solvent's water, okay? And then if we add one gram of a substance to the water, the color changes a little bit. And if we add two grams, it changes a little bit more. Three grams, it changes more. And all the way up into five grams, we can see that's much darker. Well, we could put these solutions through the spectrophotometer and we get absorbance values. Remember, the absorbance values just tell us how much light was absorbed. Right? The, the darker the solution is, the more it's going to get absorbed. And so we can graph that in, um, on the y-axis. We'll put our absorbance values. And on the x-axis, we'll put the concentration values. Okay? These are all solutions that we have prepared because um, we'll know if we prepare, prepare them ourselves, we'll know exactly how much is in there and we can relate it to the absorbance that we get. So when we graph them, all right, there's our, our zero grams per liter was the, um, uh oh, our zero grams per liter are going to um, have zero absorbances. And then our one gram per liter, it's going to give us a, a 0.2, a two grams per liter gives us a 0.4, three gives us a 0.6, four grams per liter gives us a 0 0.8, five grams per liter gives us a 1.0. So we've graphed that. And we'll use that as a reference to do an unknown later. So Beer's Law says there's a linear relationship. It looks like a straight line, doesn't it? Between absorbance and the concentration of the sample. And you can see that's a straight line. When you graph those values, that is what you get. Okay, so what does this Beer Law's equation mean? A is the measurement of how much light is absorbed. So that's the absorbance. E is the absorptivity factor, and that's just how well the substance absorbs light, all right? L is the length that light travels through the substance in centimeters. And so in the experiments that are used in a spectrophotometer, um, it's almost always one centimeter. And so for the most part, you can just ignore that because one times anything is just whatever it was. And C is the concentration of the solution. Concentration would be in terms of, uh, you know, how much substance is there per amount of solvent, amount of liquid. In our example, we were doing grams per liter. And so we have to do some math magic manipulations because the Beer's Law equation resembles the equation of a line because the y-intercept, B, will equal zero and the path length, L, equals one, so it won't affect the equation. So when I say the y-intercept, if we look at our examples up here, where, where does um, the y-axis get intercepted at? Well, at zero. 
because there will be zero absorbance um, when it's only, for example, water, right? Water won't absorb it. Um, and I explained how the um, L is going to equal one because um, that would be the path length, okay? So important thing to know is uh, Beer's law follows the y equals mx plus b, the, the equation of a line. All right, so um, you should remember the equation of the line, y equals mx plus b. Y is the absorbance value measured in our case. M is the absorptivity factor, and that would be the slope. It's the measurement of how well a substance absorbs light. X is the concentration of the solution, and B in the y-intercept equals zero, so you can just ignore it, all right? So we would ignore this. And so we would basically have y equals m times x, which is pretty cool. Cool, because it's easy. All right, so determining the amount of a substance in solution. So the measurement of how much light is absorbed by a substance can be used to determine the amount of substance present. So we talked about this earlier. Okay, you shine light through the substance. There's some absorption that takes place within the solution, and then whatever's not absorbed is transmitted out, okay? And the example I provided previously, I apologize for the uh, misspelling. It's a picture, so I can't fix it very easily. Um, diluted coffee would absorb a lot less light than dark coffee, okay? Dark concentrated coffee would absorb more light, so we would expect a higher number for the concentrated coffee. Okay, so how are we going to determine the amount of solution, substance in a solution? So like I said earlier, we prepare solutions of a known concentration, and we're using those as reference points, and we're going to record those absorbances in the solution. Then we have to plot those points. Um, remember that the x-axis is at the bottom, okay, and that's going to represent concentration. The y-axis is absorbance, and that's going to represent how much um, was absorbed. And then we're going to plot the points. And remember, first the first number is x. So you go to the right so many, and then the second number would be y, and you would go up however many you need to. So when we're plotting concentration versus absorbance, okay, let's say we were plotting the concentration of milliliters of a drug in blood, for example. And our x value, right, if we have 0, 0, well, that's going to give us this one. And then um, for the point, if the concentration is 1, for the absorbance point 2, we have 1, 0, 2. And we have 1, 0, 2 would be that location. And our next point would be 2, go over 2, up 0 0.4. Our next one would be go over 3, up 0 0.6, because that's what is right here. Okay. And um, so on and so forth to so the last one would be five. That should be a comma one. So we go five over and then up an entire one. So this is our reference line. So plot the points on the graph for the information below. And X is our concentration, Y is our absorbance, and we use the point X comma Y. All right, and I just went through how we did that. And so after we've plotted those points, where those x's are, that's where those points would be. After we plotted those points, you're just going to put a line of best fit. Basically, you're just going to draw a line through all those points. And it should be a, a perfect line if you're doing this um, in the laboratory. Um, it might be not so perfect just because of experimental error or maybe not have prepared the solutions perfectly, but that's okay, we can get great information from it. And then let's say we have this unknown solution, right? The thing we really wanna know, how much of a substance is in this solution, right? So somebody gives you this, say, hey, we wanna know how much drug is in this solution. And so you've already done the reference points from the previous graph. And so you just put it in the machine called the spectral photometer, and then you measure its absorbance. So measure the absorbance of the value of the unknown solution that you want to know the concentration of. All right, let's say the absorbance is 0 
Okay, and so you're going to match the absorbance value from the y-axis, go to the uh, where the 0.5 is of whatever of that unknown solution, and then draw a line connecting the reference point to the solution. So right over. Now wherever it crosses, right there, just put a point right there. And then the x value from the point on the line is the concentration of the known solution. Draw a line straight down. Okay. And if we drew a line straight down, we could see that that would cross the x axis at 2.5, and that'd be grams per liter because that's what our, our um, unit is for our x axis. So this right here uh, is how we would determine the amount of substance in a solution. So pretty important stuff, guys. We can do a lot of stuff with this. So why do we do this? Why are known concentrations of solutions used before testing the absorbance of an unknown solution? Well, we're doing it because it gives us a reference point that when we measure the absorbance, we can connect it to what the, con to what the concentration is. So we can determine the concentration if we have references of the different absorbance values for different concentrations. All right, so here's my question for you. What is the concentration of the solution if the absorbance is 0 0.9? All right, guys, thank you for watching. Have a nice day.